we bout to party. Unrestricted, got the house now. We gon' turn it up, up, bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. It's AEW Unrestricted. I'm Will Washington. I am with Aubrey Edwards. Hello. Look, we we just came off of one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year. We say that every pay-per-view, but I feel like it becomes more and more true every time. Well, the thing about Dynasty is it was a new one and we had a lot to prove. And I think that I think we set the tone for exactly what that event can be going forward. And just coming off of Jacksonville, which is becoming now one of my favorite places to hit. Dude, it's so good. It's one of those things that like I it felt a little groundhog day near the end of the pandemic, but every time I go back to Jacksonville, it's it's a blast. I love it. The thing for me is part of it is like the experiences that you got to have, where mm-hmm. everybody always tells me, "Oh, have you hit the f- fourth floor yet?" Like fourth floor, there? yeah. <laughs> there, you know, and everybody tells me about the experiences that. Oh, I have to experience this thing now. They're like, okay, this you officially popped your AEW cherry. Now you're really here. <laughs> now you're really a part of this company. So like, uh, that's what I think. Jacksonville has really gotten to do for me and so uh and then of course we're back for collision this week it's been a great time so I I am happy and I always am happy every time somebody gets to work Jacksonville for the first time yes and of course since our last run there in January we've had a few names show up so uh it was (laughs) also just cool for them to get to experience Daly's place for the first time so that's really cool it's such a cool venue it's just like you forget that like oh it's outdoors and it's an amphitheater and it's you're performing in a stage setting. It just changes yeah. the feeling and the dynamic of everything. And the other thing, too, is this was my first time experiencing in daylight savings time. Oh, the last time was during winter. So it was like the sunset. It's like really cool. It's cold. But anyway, we've got an AEW unrestricted to get to. We've got a show yes. to do here. And uh, hey, Aubrey, hmm. do you know who our guest is today? I think I know him. Well, you should, Aubrey, because <laughs> he is the one, the only the rated R superstar, Adam Copeland. Adam, thank you for finally being here on AEW Unrestricted. It's great to have you. I know. I felt like you finally got me with like the Wonder Woman lasso of truth and you <laughs> hauled me in for this. And no, I'm just joking. I, I, it's been nuts, but uh, we finally, we're getting it done. We're getting it. Yeah. Look, okay. I, I have to say, I have watched your entire career. So I don't even know where exactly I want to start because it's like I could easily start with the AEW stuff, but I'm like, but there's like 10,000 questions I've probably always wanted to ask you. So I, I do want to start AEW wise All right. at Wrestle Dream Seattle. That was a moment. That was mm-hmm. something that I think everybody was, was looking forward to, was excited for. Most like astute fans knew that like Metalingus wasn't a song that was exclusive to one location. Sure. But it still felt surreal to hear it anywhere but where we've heard it before. And all of a sudden, it's like, here's Adam Copeland. But it's Adam Copeland exactly as we know him. We we don't have to make any concessions here. And what was that moment like? How did that feel coming through that curtain? I mean, it felt really good. It was, it was strange, for sure. I mean, it was all very new to me because I've been used to one thing for so long. So it was nice to be able to bring Metalingus with me, just to have that little bit of... Uh, Something familiar. So that that was cool. Luckily, being friends with Alter Bridge and, and uh, those guys, you know, anytime I've called, they're like, yeah, sure, just take it. And, and that song, actually, I, I've always felt the lyrics meant something and there's something I could relate to. So that, that was huge. Uh, it was a crazy day. You know, I'd been kind of sequestered out in Everett, just kind of hiding out, getting DoorDash and, and just waiting you know, wanting to get, get moving on it. You know, uh, I had flown in and, uh, met up with Darby. We just, uh, with Giancarlo, we just started gorilla filming this, this idea, this treatment that I had. And, and I had heard Darby was the guy for that. So I just cold called him said, Hey, Darb, man, uh, nice to meet you. I'm coming to the company and can you get me a muscle car? <laughs> and the rest is history to the point where he's out tagging this this street we're not in the, the greatest neighborhood and he's tagging it so we're flying the we're, we're flying it over and and we're filming and everything and then the mariners had just won so these the mm-hmm. fireworks started going off just serendipitously which doesn't happen often so you have no idea how lucky right? you were that that happened i know i know <laughs> so it was it was all like it was just so much fun it, it just felt so uh, wide open 
and 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 so creative and and to be so involved in the creative process because I really love being involved in the creative process like heavily so um that was my first taste of how creatively responsible I could be for my vision coming to life on screen here for those people listening in who don't live in the Pacific Northwest, Everett is not close to Seattle. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll know that in a couple of weeks, by the way, because we're yes. actually going to be in Everett, Washington, May 15th for yes. Dynamite. Yeah, we, we wanted to get me out of sight. So there is no possibilities, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, Although it's, it's one of those one, things. One restaurant and the guy goes, hey. What are you doing here? I was like, <laughs> and I went out to eat once. I, I just, I just wanted a nice hot meal. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that day just because, like, I'm, I'm already in my hometown. I'm excited. It's just a phenomenal day. Will's already tried to hint at me that you're coming, and I totally missed it because I'm dense. But I remember a couple weeks before doing the math of like, okay, he left this date, and then if I count, oh, that's October first. Oh boy. And I had no idea. And I'm sitting I there. I with the silliest hint, by the way, too, because. Oh my uh, God. And she didn't catch it at all because I'm like, no. I wasn't going to give it away. I wasn't going to do anything. But it was like, uh, she goes, uh, So what are we doing at Wrestle Dream? And I was like, You think you know. And I like walked off. And she did not catch that. I didn't whatsoever. catch it. <laughs> <laughs> if it, you think you know me, I mean, uh -huh. maybe, I, but. Uh, I think I think it's I, the, the one word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it was great, too. Um, and, you know, it's funny you talked about the, the meaning of that song to you, by the way. Like, it's it's weird. In my head, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years, but that's still, like, the new Edge music to me, right? I because know. in yeah. my head, uh, like, I remember it vividly. It was uh, Christian Cage versus Hurricane. You had interrupted to promote the book. To promote to, my book, yeah. Yeah, to promote the book. <laughs> and you showed up with new music. And, and I wonder why Christian hates me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally debuted new music in the middle of his match. But you've had it. It's a song that everybody associates with your career. We just saw in Toronto, uh, the audience singing along yeah. with it. Uh, it's it's great. Yeah, it, it's taken on a life of its own, which is is so cool. You know, it, it's so fun to have it be that interactive. I guess, and 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 for me to uh, connect with something, and it feels like people over the years have really kind of actually paid attention to the lyrics and went, oh. Oh, wow. And it almost feels like each incarnation and each new chapter that happens, it almost fits even more. Like it, it's grown with me. Mm -hmm. I, I've always said to me, music is one of the most important aspects of your presentation. It really is because it sets the tone. It sets the mood. It causes the explosion. It causes whatever that explosion is, negative or, or positive. To me, it's it starts everything because the, the minute you come through, and your first scene, that's when the presentation starts. That's when your, your package is being, you know, shown to the world and what you want to put out there. So it's it starts with the music. And I just think of when I was a kid and when certain guys or, or girls music would hit and I'd be like, oh, okay, it's on. So it's always been very important to me. I've always been very hands-on with with the music, with, with the visuals and, and really the whole presentation. It's such a part of you and who you are as a wrestler and the history that we've seen for so long. But now you're Adam Copeland at AEW. So you get to bring this part of you with you. But what has sort of been your favorite part of discovering who you are in the AEW space? More than anything, uh, you know, I've I never introduced myself as any other name besides Adam. You know, if I meet right. somebody, hey, Adam, nice to meet you. You know, I've played a bunch of different characters. One I just happened to play for a long time that people are really used to. This is, I guess, even since I came back, you know, at the Rumble there years ago, this has been the closest to Adam that I've been. There's not a huge difference between the character you see on TV and the person. Obviously ramped up. I don't run around attacking people in the streets. <laughs> that we know of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I've been charged for anyway. But it, more than anything, it's just, uh, you know the story. You know my story. Everybody knows the surgeries. Everybody knows the injuries. Kind of once you know that, and once the, the I guess the curtain's been peeled back on everything that, that, I went through to get this back it's much closer to me and the actual person and and the father and the the partner and then it is you know when it was this mysterious enigmatic character or something it's uh it's pretty much just me now except i'll wear a leather vest instead of a flannel well and the you we're getting to know is the current 
reigning and defending TNT champion. Yes. You know, and it's uh, existence in AEW pretty much since it was introduced in 2020 has been a title really associated with that open challenge format. The idea that anything can happen when this title is on the line. And so far with you, you've kind of really brought that back. Yeah. What does that mean to you? And what are you expecting to continue on with this reign? I think Jay um, really, really put some onus back on that championship, really made it feel like must see television. Yeah. And I, I want to continue that. Uh, but I thought I, I need to continue it in a different way. So in between having the my two title reigns, I thought the Cope Open would be cool to earn the shot back, but also kind of open the door to it could be anybody. And that means it's Suzuki one week, it's Griff Garrison, it's Lee Moriarty, it's Dante Martin, it's Daniel Garcia, it's Matt Cardona. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's really fun to me. It's also fun as a performer to go, those are all completely different styles. Like there is not one guy out of that that, that is similar. That's really cool um, because I love trying to put on a different hat for each, each opponent um, because I've always tried to challenge myself to go, okay, right. If I'm wrestling this guy, I can adapt. If I'm wrestling this guy, I can adapt. That's a really fun challenge though, because sometimes maybe you don't adapt, but it's fun to find out. It just so happens you're finding out on live television. So <laughs> that can be a bit of a pressure cooker, but it's just a lot of fun. It really is. And it feels like all bets are off. Like anybody could show up. So look at a free agent. It's a possibility. Trust me, I'm looking at them and I'm going, hmm, hmm. I've already done all my homework. And, and that's really, really fun just to keep people on their toes. And, and if you see, you know, a cope segment, who knows gonna, who's going to show up? I, I think that's fun. You know, and I think that's the part that makes this entire run of yours in the existence of it feel so surreal, right? Like I, I, I thought about it the moment Suzuki was having his entrance. Yeah. I was like, God, if you had told 2018 me that Adam Copeland was going to be wrestling here and not just be wrestling here, but he's going to be wrestling Minoru Suzuki on AEW Dynamite. Like, it wouldn't have computed to me. It wouldn't have even made sense. The, 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 none of this sounds right whatsoever, but here yeah. it is happening, and it's entirely possible. And it just it made me feel grateful. It made me feel like this is a really cool thing that's happening. I mean, at multiple fronts, there was no AEW. I was retired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like I said, you know, when, when I was forced to retire, I was told that was it. You are done. There is no no coming back so for me the ship had sailed and it, it wasn't like on the horizon it was long gone like nine years it's not like it was two years it's not like it was three years or four years or five years or <laughs> we're almost a decade into retirement right yeah so that was that it just all of this has been such a a second act i guess really and and what's been really fun about it is that i feel like i brought back more mentally with me you know physically i i might not be able to do some of the things my brain wants to tell me, but I, I feel like because of my experience, but not just experience in the ring, more my life experience now, raising kids, going through that type of an injury and then, and then turning to acting and doing, you know, like a hundred episodes of television while I was retired, that, that really helped me bring some different tools in, into my, uh, my bat belt, my utility belt to, to bring back with me. That's been really fun to explore. It's almost made me enjoy the art of the promo more than the matches at times, mm. realizing the importance of that and, and what a storytelling tool that we have at our disposal if we can try and, and really master this thing. And there's no fully mastering it, but getting as close as you can and, and, and finding your voice in it, I think is really, really important. And, and um, what's been really fun too is, is just sitting down with younger talent you know, if they want to pick my brain, I've told everybody I'm I'm wide open. I am here. Here's my number. It might take me a day or two because kids, life, dogs, all that stuff. But I'll get to it and uh, and I'll watch it and um, and then we can sit down and peel apart together. And that that's a really fun process, just to see light bulbs start to go off for people. Go, ooh, okay, I'll try that. Hey, and it might not work for them, but give it a shot and see see if it works for you. This has worked for me. There are so many things you said that I want to talk more about, and I'm so excited, but we got to take a break real quick, and then we'll talk more when we come back here on AEW Unrestricted. 
AEW Unrestricted, Aubrey Edwards, Will Washington, Adam Copeland. We've got so many things we've talked about. I'm already like sitting here just like fully inspired by this conversation. We've got two full more segments to come up. So you you had touched on a little bit before the break that you got really into acting and doing TV and over 100 episodes of television while you were retired. What was that process like getting into acting and what has that brought to you from a wrestling perspective? I, I didn't fully realize what it brought to me until I came back. Acting was a, was a happy accident. It, it, I never had aspirations. I never wanted that to be my career. I was pro wrestler. That's it. That was the end game. And that's all I ever wanted to do. But when you're told you can't do it, got to wrap your mind around some stuff. And uh, luckily, uh, executive producer for a show called Haven, uh, that Haven. film, they saw my retirement speech and they said, can we get that guy? <laughs> Went out there and one episode turned into 41. In the process, I learned, wow, this is really awesome. Like, th- th- this is a cool gig. It's, it's not wrestling. You don't have that instant gratification to know if what you're doing is working, if people are picking up what you're putting down. But it's still very creative, and it's still tapping into that creative vein, and I, and I need that. I think anybody who's involved in, in wrestling is a creative person. So it became kind of my place to still get that out and fell in love with it, started putting work toward it. I just talked to directors, talked to, you know, the DP and go, okay, why are we lighting this way? Why are we doing this? Or why are we doing this angle? Why are we get, you know, just, just, and, and talking to other actors and, and saying, why'd you make that choice? N- not questioning it, but wondering. Learning. Why. Yeah. Yeah. To the point where it's probably annoying people, but that's that's what I did in wrestling. You know, I just asked questions. If I was on an indie show and Bad News Brown was on it, I was going straight to Bad News and going, okay, what do you got for me? Because my ears are wide open. And uh, I wanted to be the same way on a set. In coming back to wrestling, I realized how many different things that I could use. Because as much as they're they're different, they're still the same tree. They're just kind of different branches, right? It was fascinating to to kind of come back, like I said, with a promo and, and realize how to use movement, how to use stillness to make it mean more, how to use your eyes, because everything hold with these things. So often in wrestling, we get caught up in moves and spots and, you know, sequences or whatever the terms are nowadays. But give me these all day and I'm going to get more across with those than I will by doing a, you know, a shooting star. Plus I can't do one. So there's that. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Cause like I, I have 20 years of ballet experience and you saying the eyes, it's like, we were frequently told during rehearsal, it's like, okay, what are your eyebrows doing? Yeah. It's every little thing. You don't realize how every part of you encompasses the story you're telling until you think about like, well, where are my fingers pointing when I'm doing this scene? Yeah. What am I looking at? What is my body language? Where is the camera coming in from? It's just fascinating stuff. And it was a learning curve when I first started acting. Um, I, I've told the story before, but there was a director. Her name is uh, Lee Rose. We were doing some of my first close-ups and I was just doing the wrestling thing. This is what I know, right? Mm-hmm. And she came up to me after the take. She goes, um, <laughs> what, what you doing with your eyes there? And I went, I don't know. What am I doing? She goes, should stop doing it. And I went, okay, well, show me. Because I have no idea what you're talking about. So she pulls me back to the monitor and we're looking. I was like, oh, oh, Lord. I, I look like a madman because it's <laughs> right here. And my eyebrows are, and my eyes are, ah, you know, and I'm like, oh, I'm going for a football stadium. Mm-hmm. And this isn't that. You can see my nose hairs. So I got to <laughs> pull everything back here and make sure that I don't look like a maniac because the scene doesn't call for that. So it took some getting used to, to, to pull everything back. And then in coming back to wrestling where you want everything to be that again, I realized, no, you can still use those things. You just got to make sure the time's right. The camera's hot. So you're always, I'm always aware of where we are and what's going on and, and trying to play to them accordingly. There's a lot of plates to keep in the air out there. And that's also one of the things that I've always loved about professional wrestling. And I have much more of an understanding of now in this run than I did in the first. Well, that's the thing I wanted to ask you because, um, you know, talking about coming out of acting and everything you picked up from it, you know, you got to return to professional wrestling in a manner that I don't think any of us will ever forget. Mm-hmm. That was one of those, you know, it was the day Kobe Bryant died. So I'll always associate it with. Strange day. And I was, yeah. And I was like sad all day. And then it's like, 
oh my god adam's back what are we talking about here and like it, it was like this range of emotions for that day but you know talking about coming from acting you know you got to return to a world you knew or almost you thought you knew because the pandemic hit yeah right after that yeah did you feel like what you were able to do in acting really enhanced what you were able to do without an audience yeah you know it was weird even that day as i was kind of sequestered in the, the manager the houston astros astros manager's office i was like seeing this stuff about covid and i was like hmm because it was just filtering into our psyche at that point mm -hmm. Kobe and all of this so it was just it, it was a very surreal time then when everything really hit and i i remember just going live with the promo it was the first segment of raw since the pandemic and i was doing a promo and i went oh i gotta go straight down the barrel on this there's no other way to do this but i had that realization 10 seconds before we we're live i just cut a monologue essentially and, and treated it like an audition and after i was like okay i think that's the way i need to tackle these from now on and at least while things are like this and hopefully now you'll pay more attention to the little subtleties and the nuances and and all of the little things that you put in there because there's not a yelling audience there's n there's not an audience to play off of so now hopefully people are at home watching and seeing all of the little things that i want to try still getting crowds back with so much better life changing uh -huh. yeah you know it's <laughs> like i look back on it I'm like man the first full year of my comeback and there was nobody there you know obviously bigger fish to fry you know like boohoo for me right like <laughs> but your poor unfortunate life you're still on live tv <laughs> yeah right i got it so tough but like there's still a part of me like man that that first year would have been really cool but at the same time i leaned into whatever the positives could be and from that, once we got audiences back, like I said, I learned that I could keep some of the things that worked there and, and pull them into this new phase of, of what wrestling on television is. Yeah, it's such a weird time to think that it was so recent, but it feels like forever ago. It feels like decades ago already. Right. And it also just shows how adaptable we are as, as a human race to soldier on. But yeah, it, uh, it feels like a long time ago, and I'm, I'm glad it does. Yeah, definitely. So you, you come back to wrestling, yeah. pandemic happens, you get to start performing in front of fans again, you have these amazing matches, and then from there, you end up jumping over to AEW. Yeah. Like, what was the catalyst for that? You know, I really sat down, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I, I had a match that I loved with Sheamus in my hometown. About halfway through that match, I was like, this, this could be it. There's a very good chance this could be it because I feel really good about this. But I knew I needed to like get away from the emotions of the night, sit down when I got home, put my flannel on and just sit in my rocking chair and think, <laughs> right? Get a cup of coffee, sit with my girls and just say, so what do you think? What should that do? And what I said in the promo was true. Um, they said, go be with Uncle Jay and have fun. Mm. Not that I wasn't having fun. But I truly felt like I could help more with AEW and be allowed to help more. Like I wanted to be there week in, week out. I didn't want to pop in every three months, every four months. I wanted to be hands on because I felt like that's a way I could help more often just by constantly being there, by constantly sitting with talent or watching their stuff or whatever that is or getting in the ring with them, you know, getting hands on. That's how you can really, really do some things. So more than anything, I think it was that, just looking at the totality of the industry and going, okay, where do I feel like I could possibly help more or be given the opportunity to help more? And it was AEW. And, and then I looked at the roster. And that, for me, was a biggie because I just started running down the list and I was like, oh my God, like all of these people I've never worked with, I've never wrestled. And it was almost everybody, like 98% of the roster. That's insane. Like, even guys that you would assume, like me and Samoa Joe, we've never been in the ring. It's wild. That's crazy, right? That, that to me, was one that I went, oh, we, we have to rectify that. We have to remedy that. Please, <laughs> please. Yeah. <laughs> Hangman, because I'm loving, I love his stuff. And, and Moxley, like Moxley and I have never touched. And this incarnation of me and this incarnation of him, ooh, 
man, I'm, I'm Jones and for that one. And then you got swerve catching fire who I've always, you know, him and I have always had a great relationship and I've always seen what I think everybody else is starting to really grasp onto now. FTR, the box, you know, like Claudio and I have never been in a ring together. How the fuck? <laughs> right? Like how, how has that happened? Like even, even Brian and I, have only had one singles match. It was like four minutes long. And then we had a triple threat. And But that's it. Like, we've never had a proper these guys one-on-one. You can keep going down the list. Like, it's just name after name after name after name. And, and that's really, really exciting to me because this deep into my career, I think I'm 32 years in now, to have a whole set of new challenges, that, that gets my hair standing up because the challenges are my thing. Right. I, I always try to set new challenges for myself because otherwise I, I just need that. It was a challenge to come back from a triple fusion on my neck. Nobody's done it before. Okay. Right. Let's give it a shot. Hold my beer. <laughs> hold, hold my beer. Hold, hold my scotch. <laughs> <laughs> and in looking at this roster, it just, it was super exciting. That was before Osprey and that was before Okada. Omega and I have never touched. Like, seriously, like, think about those matches, those names. Like, <laughs> So that's why, you know, it, it really is. There was only so much to do with WWE. And I feel like I'd done it all. And I, I feel like we both felt that way. It was just time. And to look at this this new company, this exciting company, and and I'd I'd watch and I'd be I'd be stoked. I'm like, man, it'd be fun to get there. It'd be awful fun. And then I had friends there and I talked to them and like, you'd have a lot of fun. And and honestly, at this stage of life, I'm 50 years old. If it's not fun, I'm not gonna do it. A lot of reasons, but uh, yeah, the, the the main thing was just the excitement of it, the challenge of it, and the roster. Age aside, if you're not having fun, you shouldn't do it. Independent, if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, however old you are, like wrestling is meant to be fun, whether yeah. you're the performing or you're watching it or whatever. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I've loved having you as a coworker is it's very clear to see that you are having fun. You know, I, I, and it feels like people like find that hard to believe that that it's work, but you're having fun. Like this is all yes. I ever wanted to do. There, There's nothing else that was on my docket. This was it. And I'm getting to do it. And I get to do it for this long. And I, I get to do it at the level that I've done it and seen the things I've seen and work the people I've worked. There ain't nothing bad about that. Uh, I love it. And honestly, uh, I'm so excited. Just the, the list you named, there's so much I want to get to talking about. <laughs> and it'll be on the other side of the break because we're going to get there right here when AEW Unrestricted continues. AEW Unrestricted, it's Aubrey Edwards, it's Will Washington, and... We're with our guest of honor. He is the one and only rated R superstar, Adam Copeland. Cope, I'm getting really adjusted to saying Cope. I see it on all your gear. I see it on your shirts. I'm like, Cope, it's, I'm trying. It's, 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 it's sticking with me. Like, I was talking with Mike Mansuri the other day, and he's like, I know him as one thing, and it's all I'm going to know him as. I'm like, no, Cope, I'm going to stick with Cope. I know Cope, and I, I can get with Cope. Yeah, you know, I was honestly, I was just like, okay, if I'm looking at a marquee, Adam Copeland versus Sting. Cope versus Sting now. Okay, that feels a little sexier. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the right word, but you know. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody would, would term me in versus Sting sexy. But you know what I'm saying. It, uh, <laughs> it just, it jumps out. No, I, I like it. I, I genuinely do. It, it has already grown on me. One of the things you mentioned, though, was kind of giving back. And it's one of my favorite things to watch, actually, backstage. Mm -hmm. I, I sit back and I observe it um, because I think it's really cool when after somebody's match, I watch you sit with them and talk about what you saw, what you felt they could have worked on. I watched after uh, the ladies had the street fight um, just a few weeks ago and you were talking with every single one of them. And it's one of those things that I think everybody at some point i think feels that they would like to give back to the business at some point sure. and getting to watch you do that has been really cool to see and i see it every single week and for those who don't know this is just something that adam copeland does and it's it's really great i had plenty of of examples that uh showed me that that's what you should do over the years if i saw bad news brown or if i saw rick martell or if i i would just pick their brains you know, and and I think they saw that it was genuine, that I really did want to know, what do you got in there? Please fill, fill me in because you've been places that I want to get to. 
I've watched matches of yours that caused me to feel, and I want to make people feel. So how'd you do it? If I can be any small cog in, in the wheel of making someone better at the craft, great. Or, or even just open their eyes to something or open their ears to something because it, it's a collaborative thing. And I don't know if, if my experience over the years can in any way help, then that's another reason why I signed with AEW. Because I, I truly thought, okay, with my experience, I, I could help some people that I see are right on that cusp. I see it. I'm like, ooh, I don't even know if they see it yet, but I see it. That's fun. Like I said, I had so many people over the years between Bad News and the, the Rick Martells and the Michael Hayes and the Pat Pattersons and the Tom Pritchards and the Dory Funks and the Bret Hart's. All of those people took their time to sit with me, to teach me, talk to me. And I'll, I'll never forget it. Like those lessons are imprinted in my brain for life. And it really is fun to sit down and just chop it up with some young talent. You know, I love sitting down and talking to Daniel Garcia, you know, we're, and even when we wrestled, I was like, try this, feel this out. How'd that feel? It, that That's really, really fun. It's really, really fun. When I wrestled Dante, I was like, okay, dude. So here's the story I want to tell your strength is flying, so I want to take away your equilibrium. I'm going to work your ear. <laughs> I was like, how do you feel about that? He was like, you can tell he was kind of thrown off, but I was like, I, I just want to try it. I just want to see. It was so much fun just to, to give it a try and see if see what sticks. That's always been a part of, of this that I've really loved is just sitting down and collaborating and, and uh, either helping or being helped. So you're doing all these great things for our up-and-coming roster and implanting this amazing kind of feeling of growth amongst all of us. Like, I know, like, you and I haven't sat down to, like, download after a match, but I distinctly remember, like, you and Garcia talking afterwards, and I'm just sitting there, like, soaking in everything like a sponge. And I'm just like, this match was great. Now let me learn everything about how all of them approached it and thought about it and whatnot. So on the other side, you're working with someone who you've known for years in Christian Cage, yeah. I was sitting at home watching this I Quit match. You got the title back because you had the title before. It ended up being yeah. the shortest reigning company history, but you got the title back. How do you approach something like that when you've known someone for so long and you have all this history together as opposed to all of these other matches you're doing in the Cope Open? Again, back to the the challenge of it, right? Like uh, uh, from wrestling a, a Griff Garrison, right? Who's just so young. Great kid. And great guy and, and so much upside and so much potential to then getting in there with a guy that I've been best friends with for 40 years and who has been doing this for 30 years. So between us, we got over 60 years of experience in there. I, I always say like it, it's pure bliss or it's almost pure joy when you can just fully be in the moment and you can fully, you're taking everything in. You're taking in crowd reactions. You're taking in just every little bit because you have time to, because there's no, there's no thought. You're just doing that to me is when the really, really the, the magic cakes get baked. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, by the way. I've never I'm stealing that. that. That's a great phrase, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just a joy, honestly, to be in there and just to just perform and, and have no real thought other than, you know, these people are going to get off on this one. This is going to be fun. There's going to be a hockey fight. Oh, I, I lost it at the hockey fight. The Bruins jersey, the Maple Leafs jersey, and then in the box, I, mean, I was dying. <laughs> there were so many, so many aspects that were just so fun. And really another one of the reasons why I wanted to come to AEW. I, I wanted to, for us to get our proper chance to tell this story that I don't feel like we were ready when the, when we had the chance before 20 some odd years ago, I felt like now the performer that he is now the performer that I have, I am now, I, I knew it was just going to be so much different and it's exactly the way I felt it would be. And then some just so much fun. And then to get in there with Cardona who I'd never wrestled before teamed with plenty of times but to see and feel his growth, he blew me away with just how much of a professional he is, how polished he is, how good he is. Again, it was one of those moments where I could just totally be in the moment 
and, and just soak it all in and hear it all and feel it all. Man, the nights like that are, th that's why you do it. It really is. Those are the things. It's like, this isn't work. It's, it's really not. When it's like that, and when it's this thing you've always wanted to do, like there, there's no other way to put it. I'm one of the luckiest dudes in the world because I know the small percentage of people that, that decided they're going to be something and then got to do it. Mm -hmm. I am one of those people and I know how rare that is. So I don't look any of it. I don't look past any of it, especially having it pulled away for nine years. That's why every little, every little thing, man, I'm just soaking it up and enjoying it for all it's worth. Because again, you know, we, with my age, with my injuries, I, I know it's not going to last forever. So I just want to make sure like every little bit of it is, is going to be, uh, is going to be with me for life. That's amazing. And, and it's amazing too. Cause I remember I, I mentioned it to Christian almost right before the match, you know, you, you mentioned getting to do it, you guys way and getting to do it properly and getting to tell you guys a story. That's one of the things I've always appreciated about AEW. And I really appreciated it the first time Remember when Jimmy Jacobs started in AEW and he walks in, he could go in honestly three different directions because it's like, okay, here's people I know from WWE over here, but oh, here are the people I know from TNA. But right here, oh my God, there's the people I know from Ring of Honor. And uh, they all knew him from a different space, but everybody had come together and it really reminded me of what AEW is. And seeing Christian Cage's rise over the years and seeing what he became and how he really got to find himself as a singles performer and as a top level singles performer in TNA all those years, then to come to AEW and, and find himself that way. And he's using music that he established in TNA, but here he is with the, the Christian Cage name and all of that. And then here you are where you've established your name elsewhere, but everything has now come together from almost two different places in one place, mm -hmm. but it's also two guys that we know from their partnership together. And it's like only in AEW, because of AEW's existence, could all of this come together yeah. the way it has. And only AEW could make that happen. Well, and, and that's why the other night, you know, when I when I cut that promo, it wasn't even really a promo. I was just saying what I felt. Mm -hmm. I've always just enjoyed pro wrestling, period. I think it's a great time to be in the industry. It's a great time to be a fan of the industry. I, I've never understood why people get so fixated on initials. I, I just love good wrestling. And I also appreciate a place where you can tap into a wrestling fan's memory. Because I've always said, wrestling fans remember. And they want to be rewarded for remembering. They want to be rewarded for being there for the long haul. And man, I'd have discussions about it. Ah, nobody's going to remember. Nobody's going to remember. I was like, well, with that attitude, no. But I have a feeling they will. And if they don't, that's what packages are for. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I digress. So I get here, and when Matt Cardona's music hit, I went, mm. <laughs> they remember. Yeah. Wrestling fans remember. And they 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 want to be rewarded for these things and to see these things that they never thought they'd get a chance to see. That's what, why I, I think AEW is so much fun. Because truly, like I could go out for a Cope Open. Who knows who's going to show up? Man, I got a list. And, and that's not even within AEW. So that happens here. And, and that's a really fun place to navigate from. Yeah, I really just, I love getting on that plane every week. I really do. You know, I, I hate leaving the girls, but I love getting there and, and just trying to create something. And like I said, if I can pass on anything in the meantime while I'm there, you know, even better. It's so great because as you were saying that, I was sitting here going, oh, Will remembers everything. Like, that's just one who he is. And of course, like he's remembered your entire career. But for me, my first introduction to you was actually, because I didn't watch wrestling as a kid. My first introduction to you was your retirement speech. Okay, That was the first thing I ever saw you do. So I'm like, okay, well, I know this guy's really important and this is really sad and everyone's very, very sad. Okay, cool. So it's not just all of the things that you've done before, but all of the new memories you're making today. That's one of the things that I love seeing you interacting with the fans is like this moment that doesn't exist outside of this present moment that we're all going to remember forever. That's when this industry is at its best, right? Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's not about the moves. Those help. Those are the garnish, right? But what people really latch on to, what, 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 and they might not even realize it, is what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And that's how you make moments. Moments are, are the things that are actually remembered more so than necessarily the moves. Now, you'll have your, your stuff 
here and there that will be replayed and replayed and replayed. And, and there are those, don't get me wrong, but if you do that all the time, then people get desensitized and then what, right? So I know that Spirit of Jeff Hardy is going to be played forever, right? And that was a move. But when I really caught on to what what made the difference, it was when I started paying more attention to, to here than to the moves. Mm-hmm. And that creates moments, that creates memories. So many times, like I remember Omega and, and, and Brian, and what I remember most is before they locked up. Absolutely. They're just standing there. I was in that crowd and I, I, and I, I remember, you know, you always remember how wrestling made you feel. And I remember moment. being in that crowd for that. And just that feeling of, yeah, my God, these two are locking eyes with each other and I can't believe this is happening. And yeah, I agree with you. It was a moment, you know, before Christian and I like locked up the other night, it was like, Ooh, I'm feeling that I'm feeling that. Those are, those are moments, you know, and, and you as a performer, you feel them too. I mean, there, there's no way around it. Like if, if you're in the vicinity of that, you feel it. You know, it's special. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about this. You know, I've always related to like stand up. If you go see somebody and stand up and their, their set is killing and you're feeling it, you're all in this thing together. But if you're bombing, oh, I better, better try down the, the, this path. It's the same with the match. It's the same with the story. Or, or like a set list with a band. Mm-hmm. I've always appreciated, uh, you know, I'm wearing a Pearl Jam shirt, but uh, I've heard Pearl Jam call their set on the fly. That to me is amazing because they're reading the room. Mm-hmm. There's very few industries where you can do that and have that kind of interactive kind of reciprocal relationship. And I just, I just find that so fascinating. It's the human dynamics and, and understanding what moves a large audience and, or, or what moves one person it's really really fun to dive into and i'm constantly reading books on it and and trying to grasp how the mind works it's fun because you can pull it back into this adam copeland this has been an amazing conversation i wish we could do this for another 45 minutes Is it 45? yeah i get verbal diarrhea so. <laughs> no it's good it makes it easy on us man i'm just sitting here just like loving my job even more listening to you so <laughs> but hey, it's about creating moments. It's about creating memories. It's about that feeling. And you can get that feeling when you watch AEW Dynamite every Wednesday. You can watch AEW Collision every Saturday, AEW Rampage every Friday. We've got Ring of Honor available every Thursday on our club, watchroh.com. And of course, we've got Double or Nothing coming up here. It's going to be live on pay per view. It's going to be at the MGM Grand. So definitely make sure to check that out. AEWTix.com is the way to get your tickets. Otherwise, Adam Copeland, thank you for being here on AEW unrestricted thanks for having me finally or me finally getting there (laughs) (laughs) took a bit but it was well worth the wait all right and we will see you next time have a great day bye come on throw your hands up let me see you unrestricted got the house now we gonna turn it